In the next 60 seconds or so, I'm going to tell you a bit of an outside of the box tactical idea involving the Sandra Martinez, and I want you to pause the video and let me know in the comments what you initially think of it, even if you do disagree, and then watch the whole video, come back to your comment, and comment underneath if I managed to change your opinion at all. But if you, like me, are a massive fan of Lissandra Martinez, then go over to Jersey FIFA, and you can pick up one of the current season Manchester United jerseys with his name on the back, or you can go to their retro shirts and pick up a Manchester United, or any other club or international jersey that you like. If you use code Atlantis at checkout, you'll get a discount, and I'll leave the link in my Instagram bio, which will be linked in the description. So my idea is to play Lissandra Martinez as a left-back, not all the time, but on certain occasions. But what does this have to do with Jeremy Frimpong and the right winger who I would sign to get the best out of him? Well, if you bring Frimpong into the side at right back, you have to give him the freedom to push high up down the right flank, almost as a right winger at times with the necessary defensive stability behind. And so in order to keep the balance in the team, I've been flirting with the idea of potentially using Martinez as what essentially would be an inverted fullback or at least a left-sided defender in a back three in possession. In episode two of this Director of Football series, I spoke about why I'd bring in Tadebo and Simakan, and you can find that particular episode, as well as the first episode of the series, linked below in case you do want context. But I think Simakan in particular would help get the best out of Frimpong. This is because Simakan is basically a centre-back right-back hybrid, and so like Lissandro Martinez on the left side, I think he's perfectly suited to playing as a wide defender in a back three, both in and out of possession. And so in possession, this is how my Manchester United side would look, with a back three of Martinez and Simakan, either side of Tadebo, with a single or double pivot in front, let's say Maynou with maybe Mount and Bruno Fernandes ahead. I will come on to my central midfield signings in the next episode, but shifting to a back three in possession not only allows Frimpong to push further forward, but also allows Simakan to join the attack down the right side in the final third as well. But in order for this to work, you ideally need a left-footed right winger who can hold his width but also invert and drop into the half space between the lines if needed. Anthony? Of course not. The player I'd bring in would be Michael Elise from Crystal Palace, who I reckon would be available this summer for between maybe 60 and 75 million pounds. And just from watching him play, it's hard not to see Elise as a player that Anthony should be. But if we look at the Palace man's FB ref report from the Premier League last season, his low non-penalty XG and non-penalty goals may be a concern. And getting into better goal scoring positions is definitely something he has to add to his game. But factoring in his age with him only just turning 22, as well as the fact that he was playing for a very conservative Crystal Palace side, I'm confident that in a better side, as he develops naturally, this will improve. But scrolling down and looking at his ball progression and chance creation metrics, you start to realise what all the hype is about. As when it comes to his passes and crosses into the final third, as well as his XG assisted, you can see that he's ranking around the top 10 to 15%, which is hugely impressive. His dribbling and ball carrying metrics aren't quite as high, around a 70th percentile mark, but once again, he was playing in a conservative Palace side, and his effectiveness with his crossing and his passing means he doesn't have to be a Jeremy Doku who is constantly looking to beat his man in a 1v1. And I actually think this makes him perfect for both Frimpong and Simakan, as naturally he's going to be looking to cut inside onto his left foot, just as Anthony does, only now in this hypothetical scenario with me as manager, United would now not just have Frimpong, who at the moment is probably the best defensive right back in world football, other than maybe Trent Alexander-Arnold, but also Simakan when given the freedom to push up from that back three, with someone like maybe Mainu covering him in the defensive line, who can both provide those under and overlapping runs in the final third. And this serves two purposes. Firstly, from Elise's perspective, these runs can't help but drag the opposition fullback and midfielders on that side away from him as they look to drop off a few yards to cover the runs ahead, giving Elise the space to then come inside and find either a cross or a shot. But secondly, you now also have one or two overall underlapping options for Elise to find with a slide rule ball in behind the fullback, which the nonchalant winger has in his locker to a much greater quality than Anthony. But how would I set up this United side tactically in order to make that right side as lethal as possible? Now obviously, if you did watch the first episode, you'll see that I did say that I will be playing the role of manager as well, just to make it a bit easier. And the setup I'd go for in the middle third in possession may at first seem a bit unusual, but if you continue to watch this whole analysis, I think you'll kind of understand what I'm getting at. So the issue for United is usually they set up in this kind of 3-2-4-1 shape, 
and my instructions to the side in possession would be to primarily look to play through the centre of the pitch, just as the Zerbies Brighton do, and that's just because playing through the centre and getting the ball in between the lines most of the time is going to give you more opportunities to create chances, just because you can obviously go either side, whereas if you are on the flank, you have to go down that particular flank, making the play a lot more predictable. But the problem is, if you are going to look to play through the centre of the pitch, the opposition side are just going to come at you with a very narrow and compact defensive unit, and usually in the Premier League, it's either a 4-5-1, or in this example, a 4-4-2. And you can see from the tactics board that this narrow shape is going to compress the space between the lines, making it incredibly hard to play through the centre, but is going to leave massive amounts of space on the flanks. However, what's happening tactically for United at the minute, and the reason I'm so critical of Ten Hag, is that the play is just far too predictable. Even though the opposition are sitting narrow and the space is on the flanks, all that happens is when the ball gets shifted over to one of the flanks, the whole defensive shape is just able to shift across the pitch and then close up those spaces as well, most of the time forcing United backwards, seeing them circulate the ball to the other side, where the exact same thing happens, and this is why United struggle to even progress the ball into the final third. However, if I was Manchester United manager, I would tweak the system from a back three with that 3-2 shape to more of the De Zerbi 2-4 shape. And I would also have two players, Hoyland and Bruno Fernandes in this example, basically playing as a front two to occupy the two centre backs. And my reasoning behind this is that if you have too many players pushed high up the pitch, as United do far too often, having basically a 4-1 at the top, this means that the opposition midfield line are then kind of forced to sit deeper, which just reduces the space between the lines even more. I think what you want to be trying to do is have players initially sitting in deeper areas of the pitch. And the reason for this is that it's going to force the opposition midfield line to push up in order to pressurise them and stop them just being able to receive the ball and drive forward, which in turn is then just going to create that space between between the lines for you then to exploit. Also, this is where the ball playing abilities of Onana come into play, as you get a man advantage in a deeper area of the pitch against the opposition's front two, and of course they could sit off Onana giving him that space, but his passing is so good that a lot of sides aren't going to want to give him that space, and so this means eventually if Onana has the ball high enough up the pitch, one of the opposition's front two is basically going to be forced to pressurise Onana, leaving one of Simakan or Todibo free, the ball can then be shifted into him, and now because you've got a lot of players in this deeper area of the pitch rather than pushed high up the pitch, this is going to give the midfield line, but particularly the left-sided midfielder for the opposition, a positional dilemma, as if they move out to press Simakan, he can then just shift the ball out to Frimpong, and if you're able to move it quickly, because you have Mason Mount in this example occupying one of the central midfielders who's likely going to be tight to him, and Bruno Fernandes in that centre forward position occupying the centre back, they are going to be reluctant to leave that space in the centre of the pitch and go over and help the left back and the left midfielder. And if United can move the ball efficiently down that right side, you can look to create that 2v1 situation with Frimpong providing that overlapping run and looking to get in behind the left back and into a crossing position. Alternatively, if the opposition decides to take a more conservative approach and instead decides to back off and close off the space between the lines, then this is going to give Simakan the space to drive forward into, something he's excellent at doing. But obviously, because the opposition is sitting deeper in the defensive third, United are probably going to have to take a more methodical approach in progressing the ball down that right side, but they can do this by creating a 3v2 on that right side, with Simakan as a third man, making a bursting underlapping run. And with the likes of Mason Mount and Bruno Fernandes in this example, positionally pinning the centre-back and central midfielder on that side, this should make it incredibly hard for the opposition to track Simakan's run, and with Alise's passing ability, United should be able to get him in on the underlap if you can't get Frimpong in on the overlap. And with both Simakan and Frimpong on the right side, you have two players who have excellent delivery when playing those low crosses across the box. Whilst you also have the variety and the quality of Elise who can come inside on his left, being able to provide an in-swinging cross, whilst both Mason Mount and Bruno Fernandes can also roam over to the right side in order to provide an out-swinging cross from a deeper position if needed. And so I think it's pretty clear that in comparison to what United currently have on the right side, my setup here will provide a lot more variety from that right flank. And with these specific attacking patterns, such as primarily looking to play through the centre of the pitch, which forces the opposition narrow, giving you that space on the flanks, and also the use of positional pinning in order to stop the opposition players being able to go over and help the wide players on the flanks, United, if they move the ball efficiently, should be able to create overloads in the channels. And with the likes of Frimpong, Simakan, and in particular Michael 
Michael Elise on that right side, United would have the quality to take advantage of this. Now we'll come on to Lissandro Martinez playing as a left back more in future episodes, as in this video I did primarily speak about him as a way of facilitating Frimpong on the right side. And so make sure you subscribe to the channel, you can check out the previous episodes in the series which will be linked below, as well as my Patreon as well. And remember to go back to your comment in the comment section and tell me if I managed to change your mind. 